Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Anita Rivers from the Bronx and today I got a great video for you guys. Today's video is going to be on con tracks because why? Because we all need one. doesn't matter who you are, a musician, a, a rapper, a designer, a doesn't matter what profession you're in, we all need contracts. Why? To save your butt and it's also to help your customers and your clients butt. So I'm going to show you guys my contract and I'm going to show you guys what should be on a contract for fashion designers. Let's get to it. Okay guys, I'm not going to go over what a contract is because if you're in the fashion industry, then you surely know what a contract is. No matter where you go, you will always have a contract. Now. What I'm going to do for you guys today is just show you guys what's on my contract, what works for me, and maybe the way I do things, maybe it can help you with your contracts and you and your clients, okay? So first off, I'm going to show you what's on the front page of my contract, okay? So this is my contract. As you guys can see, this is the front. And right here at the top, it says Classic Royalty Designs, and this is my logo. So they automatically know that this is my brand and this is my logo, okay? And right at the top, it has today's date. Can you guys see that? It says today's date, and then it has the cost. So, of course, the clients put the date, and the clients also put the cost. Because, honestly, sometimes I forget what I tell them the price is. So, as long as they remember, then that's all great. And if they lie, I'm going to know that, too, if they lie. Um, I can't see, so I'm going to place it this way. Now, on the middle part... This writing right here, I'm going to read it to you. It says, Custom Garment Order Arrangement. It says, Congratulations. The process of choosing and for me designing a custom garment is incredibly fun, creative, and rewarding. I am pleased to be involved in the process with you. So that's what this line says right here. And then underneath that is a section where the client fills out. So right here where it says client's name. So my client fills this whole portion out. In this whole middle portion, it says client's name, garment occasion. So that can be for, you know, wedding, prom, birthday. It says event date. Then it says due pickup date. So right here where it says due pickup date, that's up to the client. And that's also up to me. Because if your wedding is maybe in January, she may want to pick it up in April. But her wedding may not be until June. So that's really up to her. And that's also based on how fast the designer um, works. Okay. And then also, which helps me a lot, right underneath that, it's their email, their Instagram, their Facebook, their Twitter. And it also says, how did you hear about Classic Royalty? Now, the reason I have that is because I get people from all over. And I don't know how they find me. Because also, I'm on Snapchat, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook. I'm on every social media known to man. So, half the time, I'm not sure where they found me. And I would love to know. If they found me on Instagram, then I know I'm doing something right. If they found me um, through a friend, write down your friend's name. I want to know how, how you found me. I want to know. And the reason why I have my clients email Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook is because um, once the event happens, um, if the client normally don't send me any pictures the next day or the next week, I myself I'm gonna go on there. I'm gonna go on their Instagram. I'm gonna go on their Facebook. I'm gonna go on their Twitter and to see if they post pictures. If it's a prom or a wedding or their birthday, 100% of the time they post photos. So I'm gonna take my photos that I um, deserve. And I'm gonna take it and post it because if you don't if you don't have photos, how are you gonna present your work? So that's why I also have that there as well. Okay. Now underneath that it says measurements. Now this section, <coughs> excuse me. Now this section is what I fill out. So where it says um, measurement details, I fill out this whole section right here during the consultation and during the appointment. Now this section right here, I'm gonna read you what it says there. So it says measurement details, number size, so that's if you're a two, four, six, or eight. And then it says client's height, bust, waist, hips, arm length, arm width, neck to waist, waist to knee, knee to floor front, and knee to floor back. All this information right here is really for me. And it also lets the clients know that I'm taking their proper measurements 
the day of. So if my clients gain weight or they lose weight, they definitely have to tell me because their dress or their garment will be based on these measurements right here. Now, underneath that, it's a small portion just right here. It says design color and details. So if it's for a wedding, right here big, you can write wedding gown and then you can write, you know, beaded lace, nude mesh, crinoline, white horse hair, you know, silver zipper, um, sleeveless dress, just your own details. This part is also for you. This is like a little note area just for you. This has nothing to do with the, the client right here below. And then underneath that, see this black bold lettering right here? That part says, copy of garment design and fabric samples will be attached to this contract. And this is also for you and for the client. So what that means is once the whole contract front and back is finished, what you're going to do is you're going to take a copy of the actual sketch. You're going to staple it to this. And then also once you have a copy or a sample of the fabric, you're also going to attach it to um, the contract. I'm going to show you what, what that actually looks like. Okay, so as you guys know, I'm very professional and I keep everything in... A big binder this binder is actually only for um, I think the half of last year and this year so I really need to get a new one but I'm gonna show you what I mean when I'm I'm gonna show you what I mean by putting the sample of the fabric and the sketch on the contract so this is one of my clients dress this is a prom dress so see here the contract is filled out and I put my own notes on the side everything is filled out and okay, this is the fabric that I used for her prom dress. See how it's stapled right on top? And on the back, this is her sketch. And then you can make your own little notes as well. So here's the detail. Everything that you wrote on the bottom in the classic royalty, sorry, in your own detail box right here, it should definitely be on the back as well. You know, stone there, stone there, v-neck, applique, form-fitted, mermaid, you know, short in the front, long in the back, dramatic, you know, crinoline, all that good stuff. This definitely helps you. The reason why I put the um, sample attached to the contract is because half the time, you can write, you know, silver beaded mesh and not know which design she wants. So this definitely also helps you um, pick and choose. Isn't this fabric beautiful? I can't wait for you guys to see what she's going to look like at her prom. Love this. And this client is actually from Florida. I love my clients. So yeah, this is my... This is my binder. I have all of my clients in this binder. There is birthday. There's prom. See? And then there's... There you go. There's the design. There's a sample of another fabric. And this also helps you when you go on fabric shopping. Like, you already know what to get, what not to get. There's another sketch of a prom that I did last year. Like, this book is, this book is full of stuff. This is another tip for all of you designers. Please be organized and please keep everything in the book or binder. Okay? This will help you like this will definitely help you also i use these you can get these from like the 99 cent store like your binder dividers that helps you too as well and make sure you guys get this like these school papers what is it called oh sheet protectors make sure you buy the sheet protectors and in your contracts the fabric and your sketch can go inside of that that definitely helps you too and now we're going to go back to the contract. We're going to go to the back of the contract. All right. So now that was the, only the front of the contract. So on the front of the contract, you should have today's date, the cost of the garment, your client's information, when, what, what the occasion is, the event date, the pickup date, her address and all that stuff. The reason why I have my client's address is because I don't know, maybe you want to send her a thank you um, card or... She may come to you to get fitted and she may want you to ship it back to her. That's another reason as well. Then you have your measurement details where her height, her bust, her waist and all that stuff. And then on the bottom, it says design, color and details. 
that can also help now that's just the front okay the front is more simple now if you flip it over the back is where all the real stuff is happening the back is more detailed is more in depth of what the contract really consists of consists what the fuck is consists consists of okay so i'm gonna read you section by section of what i have on the back of my contract so guys make sure you get a pen and paper so you guys can know what to put on your contracts i mean this is my contract like i said before you guys may word it differently you guys may want may want to add more you, you guys may want to probably take out some things but i'm going to tell you guys what to put on a contract or no you should have this in your contract <laughs> All right, so the first thing I have is, this is what it says. It says, the following outlines the steps of the process and spells out our mutual expectations. Please read this carefully. And that's the first line above. Then it goes into custom design consultation. That's in bold. Then it goes on and say, after the initial consultation in which we discussed your vision and preferences, as well as your price, we will exchange and modify ideas until a final design is agreed upon. In these exchanges, we will cover fabric choices, colors, dress styles, embellishments, as well as accessories. Okay. So the name of that portion is custom design consultation. So during my consultation, the first thing that I do during the consultation is that I sketch a design for my clients, which is just a silhouette and what she wants. The second thing that we figure out is the fabric. So we have the sketch. The next thing is the fabric. And after the fabric is the small details like zippers and stones and stuff. That has to be done first before we can move on and do anything else. So the contract is signed first. That's during the consultation. Okay. Now we're going to go on to this second portion right there. And this says fittings and alterations. Now, I'm very hands-on with my clients. The clients that I have come from all over. Ohio, Florida, Canada, Miami, Brooklyn, Philly. They come from everywhere just, just to come see me. I'm in the Bronx, New York City. And they come see me because I'm very hands-on. I'm very honest. And they love my work. So, um, fittings and alterations is very important because I like to be one-on-one -on -one with my clients, like I said before. And I like to see a client's figure and body. And me, people like coming to me because I'm very honest, like I said up before, but you know, alterations is very important and the fit is very important because if the fit is off, they, that can make them change their mind about the whole entire dress. And then you have issues with, I don't like my dress and you didn't do it right and you need to fix it and yada, yada, yada. So this portion right here definitely explains what I can do if there's a fit issue or alteration issue. Okay, so it says fitting and alterations. It says classic royalty garments are custom designed and fitted. Therefore, all fittings and alterations you do with us are covered in the price of the dress, which is correct. Then it goes on and say, we have a full service commitment and we will work with you until the fit is perfect, which is 100% true. We plan for one fitting leading up to the garment completion. If for any reason you choose to go elsewhere for alterations or adjustments, you are responsible for those costs. Now, I'm going to go over two lines. One says, we have full service commitment and we will work with you until the fit is perfect. Now, for example, if I have a girl and she's a size 8, but she's telling me she wants to lose weight and to be a size 6, that's perfectly fine. That means I have your eight measure, your size 8 measurements. When you come back to me, I know it's going to be big. So the day you come actually pick up your dress, I'm going to come to my sewing machine. I'm going to alter it for you. You're going to try it back on and then you take it home with you. That means the second one is we plan for one fitting leading up to the garment's completion. Now, the way I work, I only see my clients twice. The first time the client comes, you know, I take their measurements. They pick their fabrics and everything else. Then I start and I finish the garment. The second time they come see me, the dress is finished, they try it on, they take it with them, and that's it. There's no, there's no 
It makes no sense to see your client once, twice, three or four times. There's no need for that. You're wasting your time. Your client is wasting their time. Just see them twice. It makes things so much easier. You see them. You, they choose their fabrics. You take their measurements. You work on the garment. And you have space in between so you have time to finish it. and to, I mean to start it and to finish it. And then the, the second time you see them, it should be finished. It should be finished, it should be done, completed the right way without you rushing, have them try it on. If it needs to be fixed, not fixed, if it needs something tweaked, like if the size seam is too um, too loose, then you take it in maybe like an inch, but that's it. I'm not talking about construction wise. That's what that is, okay? So next, it says changes. That's what I'm gonna read to you next, changes. So make sure you guys are all writing these, um, these down these steps down okay so next I'm gonna read is changes so here it says changes it says designing and consulting custom dresses is a collaborative process that sometimes requires minor changes along the way minor because like I said it's custom and I know what you want and whatever you want you're gonna get it says we can all expect this and that is built into your prices it says please let us know of any changes as early as possible so that we can try to accommodate. If you come to a consultation with me and it's Sunday and you're telling me you want a black dress and it's January, don't text me in April, the month of your prom, saying you want a red dress. That's not gonna happen because by the time you're texting me, the dress is already finished, it's completed, and I already bought the fabric. That's a no-no, you do not wanna do that. So that statement clearly says, please let us know of any changes as early as possible. As possible means that night, the next day, within the next three days, let me know if you have any of the questions. Let me know if you want to change a sleeve detail. Let me know if you want beaded lace instead of sequins. You need to let me know as soon as possible. If you're having doubts as a client, let me know. I'm here for you. I am your designer. If you're, if you're having doubts, let me know. Don't just sit there and wonder like, mm -hmm, uh, I don't know. Let me know. And I'll give you my best opinion. Okay? So the next line says, For the most part, minor changes can be made at no additional cost. Minor changes mean moving, um, I guess, you know, cutting a sleeve from a long sleeve to a three-quarter sleeve. That's actually minor to me. Um, what else is minor? Minor is just, you know, if you have... Um, a trim like this if you have a trim that's like this and you have it here and you don't want it there let's say for example you want to move it down just a little bit that's very minor okay That's, that's a minor adjustment to your um, to your garment. The next thing it says, it says major changes which require additional materials and or labor will be will need to be agreed upon by both parties and may result in additional costs and potential um, time delays. Which means if you're telling me you want, uh, let's say for example you come to me and say, hey, I don't want a long train, I only want a floor length train from knee to floor. That's about it. That's about 27 inches. And then two weeks from now, you're telling me you want a cathedral gown? That means I gotta take the whole bottom off and then I gotta go to the store, buy more fabric, and I gotta actually uh, charge you more money to get more fabric to do the bottom over, to do the horse hair and the hem, and to add the appliques around the bottom. So the, dram the, more, th the more stuff, I'm trying to figure out how to say it, the more details you want on a garment, after your garment is finished, you're going to get charged for it because it has to do with my time and it's more fabric and it's more details, okay? All right. Also, there's another thing that I actually have. Right on the side of these, on the back, the client's got to sign their initial. So the clients will definitely read and then they sign their initial and they sign their initial. That lets me know that they have read the back of this contract. Next, we are going to talk about payments. Right here, see where it says payments? That's the next thing we're going to talk about. All right, so make sure you guys listen and then write some notes down. It says payment. At the initial consultation, the non-refundable... At 
at the initial consultation, the non-refundable full payment is due. Yes. So what works for me is that during the consultation, the full amount is due. Now, that's exactly what it means, the full amount. What do you mean the full amount? Exactly what it sounds like, the full amount. If I'm charging you $12.50 for a wedding gown, during the appointment, you owe that $12.50 in hand. I'm not starting anything. I'm not finishing anything. I'm not buying your fabric. I'm not doing anything until that money is in hand. Why? Because some clients will definitely cheat you. They will come to you with a deposit of like $400, right? Just just $400. And then you will buy everything. And let's say, for example, you buy the fabric for the dress, which is the fabric, and you buy like the beaded lace, the mesh, you're doing her veil, you're buying the belt, you're buying all these appliques and all that stuff. And let's say all of the fabric is over $400. You're spending your own money on the stuff that you don't need to be spending on. Appliques like this, this small, cost fifty dollars an applique. Look at the details on this applique. Stuff like this costs fifty dollars an applique. And if you want twenty of them on your dress, if you want more than twenty of these on your dress, what makes you think I'm only going to take less than half of the deposit? Okay, this is the business. I don't care if you know. If you're unsure, I don't care if you're feeling sick. Once you agree to the consultation, you already know that the full amount is due. So don't get to the consultation and tell me you don't have the money because I'm gonna tell you to go because you're wasting my time. It might it might sound it might sound harsh, but that's the way I work. If you're coming to a consultation, this is how I work. Before the consultation, I send an email to my clients. It's a full layout, prom layout, wedding layout, custom layout, and they fill that out. And in that layout, it tells you the price and we communicate throughout the emails. So before you even come to my house, before you even come to the consultation, you know how much your garment is and you know what time you gotta be here. Now, what I mean is if you come to a consultation without any cash or without any payment, you're wasting my time. Because you agreed to pay that amount, you agreed to come here at 12 o'clock, that's your appointment date, and if you're coming here, the consultation is normally 45 minutes to an hour. If you don't have the, the full amount, you're wasting my time. If you don't even have the half amount, you're wasting my time. This is a business. Your time is money, designers. Don't just sit there and consult with the client and for two or three hours, you're not, you're not getting paid for it. If you feel like you need to have a consultation cost, then you can do that. Me, I don't do that. All right, so now we're gonna continue on with the payment. The next line says, after we have agreed upon the design and materials and budget, you will be asked to provide full payment of the gown. The payment covers the cost of materials and our investment and the time and labor necessary to bring your gowns to life, like I just explained. Then it says, the payment does not include shipping. Shipping, which starts at $40, depending on service, location, and urgency. That is very important. Because if you want a prom gown, and today, if this is January, and you want a prom gown, and your prom is not till April, that's pretty enough time. You have January, February, March, and you have a little bit of April, right? Now, let's say, for example, that wasn't the case. Let's say it's January and she wants it in February. That means you got to go out in January, you got to buy the fabric, you got to make the dress, and then you got to ship it to her. If I'm charging you $3.50 for a dress and you're in Ohio, I'm going to charge you about $50 because there's no guarantee on how much that dress is going to weigh. And then not to mention, you got to put that dress in the box. And then you got to see how much it's going to cost to mail it from the Bronx to Ohio. Like, all that is expensive. Next line. It says, the dress will be given to the client only after full payment is made. Which means, if you give me 800 and your wedding gown is 1000 you're not taking your dress until I have the full amount. I don't care if your wedding is two days from now. I need that full amount, then you can have your dress. It's a business. You don't go into Macy's and say, let me get that polo shirt, but I'll come back two days later and pay you the rest. That's not how it works. This is the business. Remember, this is a business. And you are a designer and that's the client. Fair trade. You give me the money, I'll give you your garment. Fair trade. Also, the payment does not include a $25 late fee. This is very important, people. Like I said, this is a business. 
remember I can't stress that hard enough this is a business so if your client agreed to have a consultation with you at 1 o'clock and she shows up at 1 45 p.m. you have wasted 45 minutes of your time where you could have booked another client so when she comes excuse me you are 45 minutes late so there's a $25 late fee okay and then if she agrees please make sure she leaves an, an, an initial C-R-A-R, -R, whatever her name is, make sure she leaves her initial. Because that's very important. Time is money. Oh, late fee applies if you show up 30 minutes or more past your schedule. And that's only for a one half an hour. So if you're late a half an hour, if you're late more than a half an hour, then you pay $25. So right now, you should have one, two, three, four things written down. You should have custom design consultation. You should have fittings and alterations. You should have um, changes. And you should also have payments, okay? So the next and last thing that we're going to talk about right here at the bottom is commitments. Right there, commitments. That's the next thing. The next, the next thing we're going to talk about is um, commitments. This is what commitment says. It says, because this dress is custom made for you, we cannot accept returns or cancellations for any reason once the client and designer have signed this agreement. Classic Royalty Designs is not responsible for any garment mishaps during your client's event, which means if you go to prom and you dancing and you twerking and all the other stuff, somebody steps on your dress and, you know, they put a hole in your dress, it's not my problem. That's what I mean by not any mishaps. Once the dress is outside of my hands and once you came to my house and you tried the dress on and it fits perfectly, I actually tell you to go sit down so you can see how it fits when you sit down. So you're supposed to do. I actually I tell you to put your hands up so you can see if it moves. I tell you to turn. I tell you to sit down and all that stuff. Once you leave my house and you know you put the dress on and you go to prom. Now you got prom for three, four, five. You got prom for about three hours now. Once you're out of my sight and something happens to your dress that has nothing to do with me, you can't blame that on me because it's not my fault. That's what that means by any mishaps. Okay, next line it says, we are committed to making this an amazing experience for all involved, which is 100% true. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact us at any time. Not any time because I do work, so the best time for a client to contact you is 9 a.m. To what? For me, is 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. I'm still up by 8, but nothing past 8 p.m. After 8 p.m. is rude. Leave a voicemail, send an email, not a text. Then it also says we welcome we welcome clear and open communication, which we do. Phone call, uh, email, FaceTime. I'm okay with all of that. And then it says we are here to we are here, we are satisfied. Sorry, when you are. You know, once the garment is complete, if you're not satisfied, I'm not satisfied. So if you want something fixed, trust and belief is gonna get fixed. But I want you to be happy because you're wearing something that has my name on it, and if you're not happy then I'm not going to be happy either. Then underneath that right here, see those two lines? We got this part right there. It says, I agree to the above order. I have checked the specifications and they are what I have selected. I acknowledge by my signature below that I am ordering a size 8, if she's an 8, for my prom, wedding, birthday, etc. And I am aware that there are no refunds and exchanges. I have read and agreed to classic work to design policies and expectations in regarding my custom garment. And that's what this is right there. So they'll fill size eight and they'll fill for prom. And then right underneath that is where your clients sign their name and they sign the date. And then I would sign my name and I will sign the date. See, it's very self-explanatory. Everything is in this contract. And at the bottom as well, it's just my Instagram, my Facebook, my website, and all that good stuff. And see, by appointment only. Okay guys, so I'm gonna give you another tip. 
When sketching your client's garment out, they want to see what the garment will look like on them, which is very impossible. So the best thing for you is to print out some free templates. Now, I'm going to show you the templates that I have that I just printed out, out of, off the internet. And they're actually based on people's personality and one of my clients shape them. This is one that I have. See, she's very tall, she's very curvy, and she has long hair. So you might want to use this um, template, maybe if your client is going to prom or to a wedding, if their hair is going to be down, maybe. Or this is perfect for like a short dress or a form-fitted long dress. So this is one of them that I actually use, that I can sketch on. And it's a very popular one because all of my clients love the hair. And with this, you know, it's very form-fitted. And I just love the face. Look at that. That face is everything. Plus size, ladies. See, she's still very sexy. Still has small waist. Her hips are a little bit more curved out, which is perfectly fine. And she's just beautiful. So this I will actually use for some of my plus size clients. So they can picture their, themselves into the actual garment. Since this sketch is plus size and she's plus size, she can visualize herself. Okay, here's another one. This one is very dramatic, but I definitely love it. This is for more of my sexy ladies, you know, my, my, my mommy. Here's another. Very cute, very elegant. I love the hair. I only have one of this left. This means I've been using this one a lot, the most. This one is this one. The hair is nice. The figure is nice. The legs are long. This would be great for like a bodysuit type of sketch. This is awesome. So like I said before, these can definitely help you when you're sketching your clients to prom out for prom, for weddings, graduations, sweet sixteens. You know? This also sets you aside from stick figure dresses like put your work on an actual model so it can look more professional all right guys so actually that was really it for the contracts we went over everything oh all i have left for you guys is that when your clients are filling out these contracts please don't do it in pencil please do it in pen pen is permanent pencil it's just not okay. i tell my clients to take a picture of the front and take a picture of the back so that they know what they've signed they know their own measurements and everything like that so I take a picture of this contract as well and i'll also show it to the parents also if you feel more comfortable having the parents sign if it's a prom have the client sign and have the parents sign next to each other if you don't have a contract please hop on it and get one you know put your logo put your own spin on it this is just the way I do things, this is just my contract. If you think that I should add something else, let me know. Or not, because this contract has been working working with me for God knows how long. I haven't had any issues with any clients, but no, I'm lying. If you think I should add something small, then definitely leave that below in the comments. That is all for today's video on contracts. And I hope you guys learned something that, like I said before, this is a business and you need a contract. And remember, you are a fashion designer. So fashion designer and client. You got to give to receive and vice versa. Make sure your work is on point and don't ever have a client question your work. Because your client is coming to you for a reason and don't ever doubt yourself as a fashion designer. If your client is coming to you and another one is coming to you and another one is coming to you, that means you're doing something great. Don't ever doubt yourself. Keep pushing yourself, keep moving forward and make sure you protect yourself with clients, um, with client uh, contracts and also make sure you have receipts. If your clients are paying in cash, which I normally do, make sure your clients, make sure your clients get receipts and make sure you get a copy and make sure, make sure you keep all of that on file. So that is it for today's video. If you guys learned something, and like I said before, if you have any comments, any concerns, please leave them below in the comments. Please share this video and make sure you guys subscribe. And I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Talk to you guys later. Bye.